Well, I will briefly present about myself. I'm staff engineer at Near Forum. I'm from Brazil. Uh, well, who knows Node.js here? Raise the hand, please. Who l doesn't like Node.js? Raise the hand, please. Right. Partially is my fault. Well, I am a Node.js technical steering committee member, so I am a member of the technical committee. So if you don't like Node.js, that's on me. Uh, well, I'm also uh, a chair of the Node.js security side, so uh, I work on the security space of Node.js plus performance. And I am a Node.js releaser, which means that if any of the Node.js recently builds breaks you, that's also on me. Um, I'm also a Fastify CleanJS maintainer, a lot of uh, organizations in the open source, so please follow me on the social media. I'm trying to, to make... It's working? Okay. So, well, one thing that I would like to talk about is that Node.js is widely used. Uh, you, even if you use Java or you use another language, you might be using Node.js in production. Because, well, there's one thing called Electron. Electron is used everywhere. If you use Slack, you use Node.js. If you use Discord, you use Node.js. If you use one password or Notion, you use Node.js. So Node.js is everywhere, even if you hate it, okay? Um, well, we have more than a billion of downloads uh, in the Node.js last year, so, uh, well, one thing that we have on mind is security is a must, okay? Uh, let's say that you are learning Node.js. It's pretty common that you go to our handle tutorial and this handle tutorial tells you, okay, let's install this package, it will solve your problem, and you, basically copy and paste in your terminal. Uh, what happens is that if this function or if this package contains um, something that will leak your information, for instance, in this specific case, this contains a read file to the etc passwd. It can do whatever they want. Like when you install a package, it gets the access you have as a user to run your application. So if you install a package, this package can sniff your network, this package can read or send data over the network or do whatever they want. I did a lot of things and it's it's terrible, yeah. And well, uh, and this is well known by Node.js developers. If you install a package, you are susceptible to it. However, since Node.js 20, um, we have included a permission model. This is available since Node.js 20. Who knows the Node.js? Okay, that's cool, don't know. Uh, well, one thing that we have included is one flag called experimental permission. This flag basically restricts all the access to the file system whenever you run your Node.js application. So for instance, in that case, I'm allowing access to my specific project only, so I will have only read-only access to that package, so the binary won't be able to, to do anything else in this file system space. If it, da if it does, it will throw an error and you will know what's happening. So this will prevent malicious actor from, from, from some packages and uh, you'll be able to check which resource is it and which permission is failing. Besides that, the permission model will restrict access to the following resource. Uh, read and write to the file system. You want to be able to create threads. Yes, you can create threads in Node.js. Uh, you can create child process. You can use child pro uh, inspector pro protocol and use a native add-ons. Like, let's say that you want to include a C++ application embedded on Node.js. You can, but using the permission model you want, okay? Uh, we have some flags to control it, so Everything is controlled by flags, so that's basically opt-in. One thing that we can't do, we can't force people to use the permission model. Otherwise, okay, uh, otherwise it will break the whole system, okay? Uh, Node.js is used by several, co several companies and everywhere. We release Node.js 20, but most of our downloads is on Node.js 14, so. If we release a breaking change here, it means that companies from Middle East, they won't be able to upgrade to Node.js 21 because uh, that would break eventually.
talk about a bit of history. Um, well, in initially, uh, the permission model was created by Anna and Jane working on the, on the Node.js space, on the near form space. Is that working? Okay. Gracias. Uh, so, well, this is a feature that we, we have working since 2018, and just now it was landed because there are some constraints that we agree on before uh, merging it to the Node.js core, which is we don't want to break the word. We don't want to, to manage or to that when you include a security feature to have access uh, to have uh, effect in your performance scope so one thing is uh, i think most of you know but in the node .js space when i give this talk to the node .js space they normally correlate security against performance when you when you increase security you you decrease the performance but that's not the case shouldn't be the case so that's why we create an alg algorithm specifically for the permission model. And well, uh, so yes, as I said, it started in 2018. 2020, we created a pull request. It was not landed, it was closed because it was not ready yet, but James created a, a, a blog post about that. So if you want to know exactly what this feature is solving, check this pull request, that's pretty, pretty good. And well, as I said, almost three years later, uh, and after 400 conversations, <laughs> we merged. And well, uh, I also uh, receive reports on HackerOne on Node.js. So for instance, if you find a bug on Node.js that you believe that is a vulnerability, I will receive that report. I will assess and I will, okay, this matches against our threat model. So you receive a bounce. We will make a, fa a patch, and eventually security scanners will see a CV open for, for Node.js. Otherwise, we will say, okay, non-applicable or something like that. And looking to the past, looking to the all the previous reports we receive, very often the target is, is you, is not production servers. Most of the targets of hackers or attackers <laughs> in the Node.js are developers, not production servers. So let's say that you are following a handle tutorial, you are following a handle guy on YouTube that, is, that aims to solve all your problems. Make sure to not install a package or to not run anything in the command line that you don't know exactly what it does. So one thing that uh, I joined in the Alpha Omega pr public meeting some time ago and I raised uh, one, one question about experimental features. Permission model is considered an experimental feature in Node.js, which means that we are still developing it, so it can break, it can change the API, so that's why it's an experimental feature. But one thing that we don't know exactly how to assess is, let's say, permission model, you, found you, you are working on that, and you found a bug. You feel it on the hacker one, because eventually a bug in a secret feature is a vulnerability right? How do we assess vulnerabilities in experimental features? Should it get the same CV score as a stable feature or not? For instance, you found a crit crit critical bug in that feature. Should we, should we haze uh, or land a secret patch with a critical in the CV score or not? That's a thing that we don't know exactly how to assess. The default behavior is to go to the safest, op safest option. That is, yes, we will. And well, that's it. Uh, I think uh, I passed my time. I have some slides, but oh, really? Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay. Right. So, uh, what do you guys think? Like, it's more interactive, right? More interactive. Who thinks that you should assess it as any stable feature? Raise the hand. Okay. Who thinks that, okay, we need to lower down and assess it like, let's say, a critical in a stable feature should be high in an experimental feature? 
one, two. What do you guys think? The other ones that didn't raise the hand. Nothing? Right, okay. Don't worry. Well, <laughs> uh, one thing important is to mention is that feedback is very important when developing experimental features. Uh, we received uh, tons of feedback on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, any social media. And we have received some uh, not so good feedbacks. Uh, well, and that's, that's a, a valid point of view because um, DinoJS, one of the other JavaScript runtime, contains the same flag, but what happens is that everybody uses it passing a flag like allo all. Like they, they don't care about it. They don't care about passing a flag or passing a path specifically to restrict access. They just run it, they just want to run it. So regardless, uh, uh, it's a valid point. It's when you receive a different feedback, it's good, so you can measure the benefit of this feature. Uh, receive some suggestion, obviously, uh, from, from YouTubers, creating content around it, and well. Uh, and community is very important. I would like to say thanks to Tobias, Anna, James, Bradley, and mainly near form that uh, is sponsored me to, to work on open source full time. And also open SSF. Thank you guys, that's it. <laughs> uh, there's a question for me? Uh, is there any plan to put this into NPM itself? Be yes, there. are. Uh, we, we are still evaluating how the NPM team will uh, handle it, uh, but we need to, to, to also talk with other package managers. Okay, cool, yeah, because the reason why I ask is just, I know one of the common attack vectors is like when you go to install, exactly. it starts running arbitrary code as you're installing and then. Yeah, totally, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any thoughts about how, how to drive adoption on apps that are using older versions and how they could easily configure themselves? Uh, I didn't get uh, so 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 you mentioned that for folks that are running NPM 14 that they won't see the benefit of this. I would also expect that, that folks that are upgrading their existing and complex apps to, to to NPM 20, that there would be some work that they need to do in order to properly properly configure the permissions. Have you given any thought as to how how to make that easy and scalable? Well, it really depends of the uh, how many dependencies you have. So uh, basically, the best way or the easy way is to run it, get the error, and go fixing things. Uh, otherwise, we, we don't have like a kind of CLI that we will generate. Okay, this package is reading from this file, and then you update. Eventually, we will have, but that's a uh, future. Yeah. Yeah. So, <coughs> have you given any thought to trying to set up more safe defaults? Because, I, 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 hey, adding a, additional options when you have a specialized idea that's great, but 99.9% .9 of the people. Exactly. They're going to do whatever the default is, yeah. And you know, and probably a follow-on question is: Have you thought about trying to make it so that it doesn't run code at all on install? Because many package managers don't run code on yes. install time yes. for reasons that are well, kind of obvious there. Security. Security. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, so defaults. <laughs> yeah, that's a trick question because um, once we we we. Uh, we need to convince the whole TSC uh, committee that that's important. And uh, they are more focused in stability than security, let's say. Uh, because once we do it, as I said, uh, this will break or this will make any upgrade of other, other uh, applications even difficult. If I said that, okay, they are sticking in an end of life version. Uh, and it's easy to upgrade just like installing the new version, possibly no breaking changes, and they don't do it, why they would do it using defaults that is even harder to make the upgrade. So that's, uh, that's a complex question. Uh, I think 
once we have the stable uh, version of permission model, we will certainly discuss it, but I imagine Node.js 25, 26, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Right, so thank you.